the next generation of Intel processors is finally here. And we have three Arrow Lake SKUs to kick it off with the Core Ultra 285K, 265K, and 245K. Does a new socket on a smaller node help propel Intel to the top of the CPU shopping list? Or is the Ultra in the name undeserved? And taking a look at our test system, all of the Intel Core 200 series are running on the ASUS Z890 Maximus Hero, though we did need to use an MSI board to correctly measure power consumption. Each was paired with 32GB of DDR5-6000 memory, an RTX 4090, and cooled by an Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 in a system running Windows 11 23H2. This video is going to focus primarily on gaming performance, so if you want more application performance coverage, check out the full reviews in the description. And starting off at 4K, in this scenario you are more than likely going to be limited by your GPU and not your CPU, but it can still be a useful test since it will parallel somebody using a less powerful GPU at a lower resolution, or if you are planning on gaming at 4K, that a new CPU is probably not going to move the needle that much. And we can see here the Core Ultra 5 245K gives similar performance to the Core i5 13600K and the Ryzen 5 7600X. The Core Ultra 7 265K is just a little bit better, giving like-for-like -like performance to the Ryzen 7 7700, but the fastest CPU and the benchmark for 100% is the Core Ultra 9 285K, which gives the same performance as the Core i5 14600K and the Ryzen 7 9700X. That does mean if you are looking to game at this resolution and have a pretty modern Intel or AMD CPU, you're probably already going to get similar performance, and if you want the best performance, it's still being held by the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, or for Intel, the Core i9 14900K. 1440p does spread out the results a bit more, though the Core Ultra 5 245K maintains its basic positioning between the Core i5 13600K and the Ryzen 5 7600X, delivering 97.7% .7 of the performance of its bigger brother. The Ultra 7 265K does a little bit better, now being virtually tied with the Ryzen 9 9900X, and just a little bit below the Core i5 14600K. The Core Ultra 9 285K comes in right around the Ryzen 9 7950X and the Core i7 13700K, leaving the fastest chips you can buy being 3-4% to faster. Dropping down to 1080p doesn't really help the Core Ultra series that much, with the Ultra 5 245K now competing more with the Ryzen 5 7600 and the Core i9 12900K from a few generations ago. The Ultra 7 265K is now competing with the Ryzen 5 7600X and the Core i5 13600K. With the fastest variant, the Ultra 9 285K competing with the Ryzen 9 7950X and the Ryzen 9 9900X. This does leave Intel's last generation flagship, the 14900K, over 5% faster, and the 7800X 3D 9% faster. That's not to say that these latest chips aren't fast, since even the slowest chip, the Core Ultra 5 245K, maintains above 120 FPS at all times in our testing. Dropping down to the more forward-looking 720p doesn't really change the order of the chart all that much, but it does give us a preview for what the performance would be like with a theoretical, more powerful GPU. The 245K delivers 94.1% of the 285K and is tied with the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. The 265K is good for 97% of the 285K, giving us performance that is in line with the Ryzen 7 7700. With the flagship model, the 285K being tied with the Ryzen 5 9600X. This is slightly disappointing since both of the previous generation Intel flagships do provide more performance, with the Core i9 14900K giving us 6.7% better performance and the 13900K delivering 5.6. So if gaming performance is not the Core Ultra's forte, then what about application performance? Here, the Core Ultra 5 245K does score the same as the Core i9 12900K, which is pretty good considering the older flagship does have an additional 10 threads. The Core Ultra 7 265K is good for 93.7% of the flagship and does score a little bit above the Ryzen 9 9900X, as well as the Core i7 14700K. 
The move to applications, though, does bring good news for the Core Ultra 9 to 85K, since it does now perform better than last generation's Core i9 14900K, even if it doesn't surpass the best application chip from rival AMD. With performance being up and down in this generation, the one thing that Intel did improve on is power consumption. While less visible when fully loaded, the Core Ultra 5 to 45K does only use 134 watts, which is less than the 145 watts on the Core i5 14600K. Likewise, the Core Ultra 7 to 65K uses only 155 watts, which is a good bit less than the Core i7 14700K's 222 watts and the Core Ultra 9 285K's 235 watts compared to the Core i9 14900K's 281. Power consumption while gaming showcases this even better, with the Core i9 14900K using 149 watts, while the Core Ultra 9 285K uses 94 and the 265K uses 77, with the 245K using just 61 watts. Coupled with the performance decrease, that's not enough to give this generation of Intel processors the efficiency crown, but at least now it's much more competitive. And when it comes to efficiency, it's hard to not improve on the Core i9-14900K. Less power and better efficiency does usually lead to better thermals, and that is the case with the Core Ultra 5 to 45K, which topped out when fully loaded at 61.2C using a Noctua NHD 15. The 265K did get a bit warmer at 72.1, putting it roughly tied with the Core i7-12700K, as well as a little bit below contemporaries such as the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D and Ryzen 9 9950X. For whatever reason though, the Core Ultra 9 285K does run warmer than the Core i9-14900K, despite using less power. Still, it didn't throttle, and typically if you're buying a CPU like this, you are going to invest in some good cooling. But should you invest in any of these CPUs in the first place? Taking a look at application performance, where at least the 285K performs at its best, we can see the MSRP of $590 puts the 285K near the bottom of the charts. Its AMD contemporary, retailing for an extra $10, does provide better performance in terms of applications, making it a slightly better value, while last generation's X3D models from AMD both have a better value as well. The real sticking point for Intel, though, has to come from the Core i9-14900K, which, currently at $445, provides a whopping 31% better performance per dollar than the model that's replacing it. The 245K and 265K, retailing for $310 and $395 respectively, both also provide better value, though albeit with lower performance. And there really isn't much else to say. Intel's last generation of chips provide better performance and cost less money than its latest generation. If you are wanting to upgrade to Intel's latest and greatest, then the 245K and 265K are pretty good options. But if you've already spent money on an LGA 1700 or an AM5 board, you probably shouldn't be itching to upgrade.